Warm greetings to you, whether you're watching this on Easter Day or beyond Easter itself. And the greetings are from uh, our staff team, from Andrea and Alison, from Amy and from Claire, from Joth and from Dave and from myself. We celebrate that he is risen. He is risen indeed. On a previous Easter, my family and I found ourselves visiting our daughter Lucy in Milan. She was there studying Italian and on one of the days we decided to go to the old medieval upper town of Bergamo. Bergamo which has been in the news so much as the centre of some of the worst outbreak of coronavirus and some of the worst effects and the deaths of many people. Those were happier times and we got off the train with anticipation and then started to follow what we thought were the signs to the funicular which would take us up to the old town itself. As we followed the signs we seemed to be going further and further away from where we expected to go and eventually we asked someone who was standing outside their house just putting something into the car. He explained to us that we'd been following not the funicular signs but the signs to the cable car. Thankfully at that point he didn't abandon us but rushed inside to uh, say to his wife that he was just going to uh, be gone for a few minutes and came out, took the child seats out of the car and then invited the five of us to get into his people carrier and took us to the upper town itself or as near as you could drive to. On the way he told us all sorts of fascinating details about the history of Bergamo, of it being a historic military route and trade route, uh, of famous happenings there, uh, of it going right back of course to Roman times and there still being cobbles that you could walk on that the Romans themselves would have walked on. He took us to a space where he parked the car, uh, we got out expecting just simply to say goodbye and thank him and he said oh no I'm not leaving you here, uh, come with me and he proceeded to give us uh, a detailed, wonderful tour of uh, the upper town for uh, at least an hour before finally he went off and we said goodbye to him. Forever after we've called him the Angel of Bergamo. And in this story that I want us to look at just very briefly today, there's the story of uh, an angelos, a messenger, an angel as we would often say. And it goes like this, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This has been a time with the coronavirus and all the ways in which we've needed to respond, of a great deal of anxiety, of fear, of even feeling that uh, other people are a threat. It's been a time where People have not been able to stay close to and say goodbye to their loved ones at the end of their days. There's been a time when there's been restrictions on how many people can actually go and finally say goodbye in a funeral thanksgiving service. It's been a time when we've not been able to see those that we love apart from using uh, electronic means which have been such a, a gift to us haven't they over these last uh, weeks. The last thing that Mary Magdalene and Mary and Salome wanted to do for Jesus was, having already been at his crucifixion, they wanted to be able to anoint him, 
and to properly prepare his body as it stayed in that tomb. So they'd bought spices. They'd already had to wait. They couldn't actually do that until uh, the Sabbath was over. They'd bought spices in the very earliest opportunity after the Sabbath had ended and right at the beginning of the next day, they went to the tomb. Their fear was, or their concern was, how are we going to get into the tomb to do this vital task? What actually happened is that the stone has already been rolled away and that's the good news, but the bad news is that Jesus' body is not there. It would be difficult to exaggerate how distressing that would have been for them, this last thing that they could do for him. Instead, they discover a messenger, an angel, who tells them that Jesus is not there because he has risen. They're quite clear, the angel is quite clear that it's uh, Jesus who was crucified, the Nazarene, who has been raised. And then they're told and given a, a message which is for them, but also it's for the disciples, notably Peter, who had denied Jesus, which is to say that they will see him. Go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So, so far in Mark's account, and in Mark's account, we, we understand that there may well be a missing ending to it, the original ending. But in Mark's account, rather than Jesus actually appearing to them, we're left with their amazement, but also their continuing anxiety and fear about this extraordinary thing that's happened. Somehow there's the rumour of life which reaches them, even though yet they've not seen him face to face. That will, of course, happen. But in Mark's Gospel, he's content, at least how it's come down to us. He's content to leave it that the seeing is still to come. The being with Jesus is still ahead of them. The goodness of his presence is still something which they await. And although they know roughly where they should go, they go back to Galilee, they can't guarantee his presence. That will be his gift and his choice every time in the resurrection stories that it happens. So in Mark's Gospel, the main thing that we're pointed to is the promise of presence, the rumour of life. There are many things that we want to draw on and say theologically about Jesus dying and his resurrection, all of them proper and good things to say. But in Mark's Gospel, the huge thing that we're left with is you will see him. You will see him. His presence will be something which you are able to enjoy and celebrate afresh. It's the rumour of life. And I wanted as part of that remembering this promise of presence to read a poem by David Runcorn. The poem's called A Day Like Any Other. It begins like any other, somewhere in the half-light, a dog barks, a beggar raps again against the cold, an early traveller coughs into the damp morning air. Somewhere a shutter swings, a city on the edge of waking. A hint of mist, of hanging smells, of trees and bread and rotting things. Somewhere a bird stirs in the first rising colours of daybreak. It begins like any other, Somewhere near is a garden with a tomb that has no stone across it. It is a day like any other. Soon the traders will rise and markets fill a day of heat with noise and bustle. It is a day like any other. Resurrection breaks upon us on a day like any other. We will simply rise from sleep to discover it. Long before our sleepy hands have made their mark upon it, it is transfigured. The faintest breeze and somewhere 
still only half awake, a rumour of angels. The message at this time of anxiety and fear. A time of anxiety and fear that was still there for the women that had gone to the tomb. We're told that terror and amazement had seized them. They had to hold together both things. But the biggest thing of all was that they would see Jesus. This was the promise of presence, that he would be with them in it and through it and take them to the other side of it. The promise of presence, Jesus, the risen one, who comes to us afresh as we're open to him. And so a, pr a prayer, and a prayer which celebrates the presence of God. And it celebrates the presence of God in all the ways that people are responding with love and self-sacrifice and self-giving, with fortitude, with bravery and courage today in uh, regular jobs and in the special frontline jobs as well. We're thankful for them. We recognise with all people in all places our vulnerability, whether it be the Prime Minister or whether it be uh, the oldest or the youngest person. All of us are vulnerable at this time. We sense the vulnerability that we have and the anxiety that we have. And yet into it and for it, there's the, we will see him, you will see him, that we hold on to. The presence of Christ in the midst of it all for each one of us. Perhaps the Queen in her message watched by many millions a few days ago, wasn't necessarily meaning to say something prophetic when she talked about, we will meet again, we will see each other again. There's something about that phrase, we will see, we will meet, and it's something that we celebrate and hold on to with our faith in Christ, the risen one, whose presence comes to us afresh. And so in this prayer, I'm going to be saying, in you we live and move and have our being, and I invite you every time I've said that to say it after me. Let's continue in prayer. World entering God, in you we live and move and have our being. In you we live and move and have our being. Self emptying God, in you we live and move and have our being. In you we live and move and have our being. Jesus raising God. In you we live and move and have our being. In you we live and move and have our being. Spirit breathing God. In you we live and move and have our being. In you we live and move and have our being. In these days, thank you for the promise of your presence. Help us to notice you for ourselves. Help us to notice you beckoning our service and our love and care for others as we continue into this day and this week. In your risen name we pray. Amen. <laughs>